Welcome back, Positive Power fans, to another amazing episode. I am your host, Ginger Star. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everybody, come on in. You know that we love the positive power here. Don't forget to hit the power button. The power button is the subscribe button. Everybody here who's been here before knows what the power button is. And don't forget to comment, like, and share. That's what allows us to continue doing these videos for you guys. I have a special guest with me today. Her name is Jessica Matheson, or should we say Math is On. I love that, by the way. Welcome to the show. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm doing really well. I've had a really nice productive morning so far and I love those because I feel like I'm in a pinball machine most of the time. So I love productive days. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and, and I hear, um, so you also interview people as well. Do you want us to tell us a little bit about your podcast and what it is that you guys do with your podcast? Sure. Um, so I have a podcast called Voiceover Girls Across the Pond, and it's with a co-host named Rami Samtosh. Uh, we are boy, we are boy, we are both. I speak for a living. Can you tell? We are both voice actors. Rami is in the UK and I'm in the US. And the idea behind the podcast was to have uh, a podcast for newer voice talent from voice talent who are also newer because in the market there wasn't really anything like that. It was more of people from um, voiceover who had been at it for years going back and remembering how things were instead of having that I'm going through this process at the same time as you are sort of perspective. So um, yeah, that's, that's what we've been doing. We had, have the format where we tend to talk about a topic and then we'll interview some people about that topic um, and we don't interview necessarily experts in the field. We're actually interviewing other newer voice talent so that they can talk about their experiences. And hopefully it will reach the newer voice talent who are listening to the podcast to make them feel like, ah, okay, this is normal. How, how you feel, I feel that way too. Okay, I'm doing fine. Either that or they can hear something where they're like, oh, that's way different than what I thought. Uh, let me, let me, let me go back and regroup, you know, so they'll have some good insight um, from people who are going through the same thing at the same time. Wow. That that's, you know what, and that's kind of similar to what we do here. So we should definitely collab somewhere down the line. Yeah. Um, and and uh, yes, I almost forgot. So uh, today's word of the day is joy. So Jessica, your challenge for the day is to try to use the word joy as many times as you can for our audience who are participating. They're actually gonna count how many times we use the word joy in the interview. And of course, as always, you guys will get a shout out in one of our shout out videos. So don't forget to uh, count how many times we use the word joy. That's what, four, five, what, six right there? Yeah, I, I was just going to ask, did it start when you started this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're going to try to use joy throughout the podcast. Um, and if you guys want to, I, I know, I, I'm probably like overkilling the word now. Somebody like edit that out, like overkilling the word. Yeah, we're overkilling. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, okay. Yes. All right. And, and I think that that's just, you know, a wonderful title, you know, for a podcast that you have voice over girls across the pond. What inspired yeah. you guys to come up with that title? Uh, well, the idea was that Rami was in the UK and I was in the US. And the term that people tend to use is that we are across the pond from each other. Um, and the voiceover girls, we were trying to actually kind of think of something clever to, to have as like who we were, you know, that sort of thing. And we just couldn't come up with anything. And we're like, well, we both do voiceover and we're both girls and nothing else sounded right. I mean, we tried like chicks or Sheila's or all these different kinds of phrases and they just all sounded really stupid. So we just landed on voiceover girls across the pond and it's just kind of stuck. That's wonderful. You know, and, and I personally think that that's like a very creative name, like girls across the pond. 
Guys, if you haven't already heard about this podcast, go check it out. It's amazing. Because I'm going to go check it out, too. So definitely send me a link after the interview for sure. And I know, like, your biggest focus that you wanted to talk about for this podcast was the use of sound and how it's a huge part of memory and has, like, very good importance to, you know, just voice over in general so give us your take on how sound is important to a podcast sure you know um there was a really funny enough there was a really great example of it um on a post on facebook yesterday about the gentleman who did the mind the gap for um like i believe like the subway system you know, for years, and and he was the voice of that. And he, when he passed away, his wife would go to the station to listen to that mind the gap, so that she felt closer to her husband because she missed him so terribly. And that sound just gave her comfort, um, and knowing that he was still close to her. And they actually, at one point, replaced the um, the voiceover that he did with a computerized version that was really impersonal. And she appealed to them and said, may I please have the cassette so that I can have my husband's voice. I miss him terribly. And going and listening to him say, mind the gap is, is, is important to me. And so they decided to actually put that back in there because that, that appeal was so moving to them. And I think that's a really good example of how the voice can impact somebody. I mean, think about when, when you hear something and it sparks a memory and it's it's a really great memory and all of a sudden you're just transported to that space and that time and and you're living in that moment again and that's the power of sound that's the power of voice and, and you can you can create moods and feelings i mean somebody can just speak to you in a monotone and that's one thing but if if you hear something in their voice you can tell that they're excited you can tell that they're angry they're sad they're whatever you create even without having to see the person, you can create a mood or an experience just just with your voice. I, I definitely believe that. Um, you know, before I started, you know, doing my own podcast um, for for Eagle Chess Knockout or even for this one, you know, I spent almost five years in a call center. And the key to working in a call center or, you know, any type of voiceover job really is using the sound of your voice. Like Mm -hmm. if I sat there and said, oh, this, this podcast is just so great compared to, oh, this podcast is so great. (laughs) We're so happy to have you here. Like there's a huge difference. And, oh, yeah. How many times in customer service do you hear have a smile in your voice? And it's true. There's a difference between saying something with just, you know, a plain tone or whatever and and having that sound in your voice, like have a good day versus have a good day. You know, it sounds way different. One sounds believable and one sounds like you're like saying don't really have a good day and I hate you. <laughs> you know? Yes, I completely agree with you. As a matter of fact, um, gosh, I I still remember uh, one of my very first experiences, like working at a call center, we would always say, how can I help you smile today? And the, the, the fun part about that is that when you have a really angry customer on the phone and it's not your department that you can really help them. They mm-hmm. sit there and go, okay, Ginger, I'm not smiling. <laughs> I mean, well, I'm trying to help you smile, sir. I, I, I want to make sure that, you know, you're taken care of because that's my personal goal, uh, mm-hmm. you know, on the phone. And at the end of the day, whether you're using the sound of your voice or whether, you know, you're, you're trying to help somebody, we're actually here to help people. And, um, and that is the joy of working in general, you know? Yes. There is great joy in lending your voice to someone's project, 
and and being able to see what you bring to it, how it changes that project and how it becomes um, memorable for others. Yeah, yes. absolutely. Just for the people who are listening to me and for my followers, um, where can we find you at in the social media world? Do you have like any websites or platforms or, or anything that we could try to find for you? Yeah, absolutely. So actually right now, funny enough, so I created um, a company that I'm trying to move everything over to us. Uh, at first I started out as, as freelancing voiceover and it was just, you know, just me. And then I created a company called Silver Vox Media so that I could expand. And so um, I kind of have two presents, present, presences, present. I have, I have two of things um, because I'm transitioning everything over, not wanting to lose existing people while I move over. So um, my website, um, I have two different domains that point to it, jessicamatheson.com and silvervoxmedia.com. Those are both domain names that point to my website. Um, if people want to get in touch with me by email, it's just jessica at jessicamatheson.com because I still have to transition that. Um, Facebook is uh, facebook.com um, slash Jessica Reynolds Matheson because I had to have the maiden name in there. I do have a Silver Vox Media page, but it's just new, so it doesn't have a lot of content on it yet. Um, and I have Silver Vox Media on LinkedIn. I have it on Instagram uh, as well. And I don't think I have it on Twitter yet. I'm still working on that. It's all transitioning. <laughs> but yeah, that that name sounds kind of familiar. Like, I feel like I've seen that somewhere before. I just I can't put my finger on it. But it, I mean, I, I definitely feel like that name has come across at some point um, within the last actual couple of weeks, like even before we met um, Silver Fox Media like that. So. so there I mean, is a company, I want to say that there is a company that's called Silver Fox with an F. Mine is with a V, Vox being a, a shortened version of the word voice somehow. Um, and so uh, there, there's a Silver Fox something. There's also like a Silver Vox um, that's kind of an older thing that like that had to do with maybe gaming or something like that, but it's pretty inactive. Um, and so I, I did some searches to check and see if, if the name Silver Fox or Silver Vox, well, Silver Vox was taken and it, it wasn't taken, but there's some kind of modifications on it, I guess. Like I, I made Silver Vox Media because it looked like Silver Vox in and of itself was something that was uh, maybe somebody in gaming that's now inactive you know that sort of thing oh so, okay okay so, yeah, maybe that's find... where it could no. be it could be because i have seen that before when i did the search and i i noticed that it was it was there but it was pretty inactive and so i was like well okay so instead of just being like the silver vox or something like that i would just do silver vox media and it also lent itself to the idea that i want to grow and expand beyond just myself you know eventually i'd like there's there's like I don't know if anybody ever did it in school, but did you ever do the thing where you had to do like the thought bubbles when you went to write a paper where you put your topic in the middle and then you shot out all these little bubbles of things that you wanted to do? So I did that for a sign of kind of planning where I was like, okay, here's my company and I want to do this and this and this and this, you know. And so by having a company name that's not just Jessica Matheson, I can expand and do more as my company grows. That's awesome. So what are your personal goals for your company? Like, is it just going to be like solely voice acting or are you going to eventually like a hire like editors? Like, what are you going to do with the company over time? I mean, I would love to be able to um, wear less hats in my business because right now I do it all. I do, you know, the voice acting, I do the editing, I, uh, um, I do the bookkeeping, I, I do the marketing, like all of that good stuff. I do have a lead generator that helps me generate leads for my email marketing, but um, I still have to, you know, follow up with emails. And I have to take that information, put it into, you know, a marketing software program so that I can keep, keep track of everything and follow up. Um, but eventually, uh, when I thought about my business and what it could encompass, I thought about 
voice acting services. Um, I have a blog, although I get writer's block a lot, so I'm not super consistent with my blog. My blog is more about, uh, so far, has been more about my life as a full-time RVer, more so than my life as a voice actor. So I've, I've had RV topics, um, and uh, hopefully at some point I'll have less writer's block and I can add stuff that's voiceover as well as RV stuff. Um, and then uh, the podcasting, I thought about merchandise. People really love the look of my logo and have been like, hey, can I get a shirt, you know? And so I'd like to get some merchandise that people can buy that's that's kind of cool. Or um, I would love to be able to coach people, you know, newer voiceover talent that would like some assistance in figuring out if voiceover's something that they can pursue. If, you know, there's a lot of people that start from ground zero in voiceover and, and plenty of times they get turned into the direction of some places that will just take your money and not really coach you enough to where you have a, a marketable demo or a marketable set of skills you find out once you start to get into it and somebody is finally mean enough or kind enough it just depends on the situation to tell you hey you're barking up the wrong tree you need more training um so i would like to to do that for folks in fact i've actually started mentoring people i don't feel like i have um i don't feel like i'm quite ready to say i'm a coach but i am mentoring some people who come to me and say hey listen i'm thinking about voiceover i would can you tell me more and i'll say yeah let's get on a zoom call let's let's chat and then there's a couple of people that have followed up with me and said, okay, great. And then we talk about business and performance and different things to, to kind of give them uh, a path. But it gives me great joy to help people find their way without having to spend a bunch of money that they find out they have to spend again because they go down the wrong path. Or maybe some people just think that voiceover is something that it's not. And then once they get into it, they're like, oh my gosh, I've spent this money and I hate it, you know? So yeah, it's, it brings me great joy to help people. You see, and that kind of goes back to what we were talking about before, how I really believe that, you know, that's customer service and, you know, you're using your power to help someone go, you know, from like the small little thing to like reaching their goals and like mm -hmm. growing up and becoming, you know, the, the big, the big, the next big thing potentially. Yeah, um, absolutely. yeah. So you give them a path and that that's wonderful to hear that there are more people out there that are actually willing to help and to care and to show others the way. Um, and, and I definitely think that, I mean, this may be negative here, but uh, yeah, we're positive here. Um, you know, there are some people who are kind of out there, you know, just to bring others down. But mm -hmm. genuinely, Absolutely. like, it, it seems like to me, you know, if, if you guys are looking for, um, well, she said she wasn't a coach yet, but I would say if you're looking for someone who's like a mentor, mm -hmm. Jessica, reach out to her. Um, I definitely think that she would be the type of person to put you guys on the right path to voice acting. Yeah. When and that's how I feel as far as me saying, you know what, I'm not a coach yet because I want to mentor some folks and I want to see that what I have told them has helped them become successful before I put my shingle out as a coach. I have to have a track record before somebody can trust me to, to take their, you know, money. Yeah. I, Otherwise, like, it's just like, okay, hopefully you won't screw me over. I don't, I don't want to be lumped into that. So I want to make sure that, yeah, I'm happy to mentor people. I have a busy schedule, so I can't have it consume all of my time, but I do have some slots open for some mentorship and I'm certainly available to answer questions, whether it be send me a message through Facebook Messenger, send me an email. Yeah, any of that stuff works. And that's another great thing about helping others. You have to be able to trust them. You know, mm -hmm. trust is a big part of any type of relationship that you have, whether it be personal or business. So um, I think you're on the right path, Jessica. You're definitely going to use your business to not only help yourself grow, but you're going to use it to help others. Yeah, and that absolutely. is truly beautiful, like in itself. And I, I just want to know, like, do you have like any other questions or 
is there any other thing that you might want to bring to this realm before we close out for the day? Um, you know, as far as thinking about uh, who you are and uh, one of the things that I learned um, through doing this voice acting stuff is that all of the things that used to be, I don't know, concerning, embarrassing, whatever the right term is things that I got made fun of or whatever you know those things that you're not confident in yourself about sometimes are the best things for for voiceover you know I I used to get made fun of for my voice like I had this weird voice because I've had this voice this one since I was a kid so in a kid's body it didn't fit so I got kind of made fun of but I ended up turning that voice into my paycheck so jokes on them so you know the thing you have to you have to kind of go you know what there are there are things about me that maybe aren't everyone's whatever it doesn't it doesn't bring them joy but they are the things that can make you unique and memorable and set you apart from others and if it's something that interests you do it and bring your own spin on it and there's room for everybody I totally agree with that statement, 110%. And I guess I did forget to ask, um, so you did say you were a voice actor. So aside from what you do in your podcast, what voices have you done so far? Or can you maybe give us like a memorable experience that you've had in being a professional voice actor? Um, well, so I, um, things that that people might be able to see mainstream, maybe not so much. A lot of the work that I do um, tends to be centered around e-learning, explainer videos, um, IVR, which is telephone systems. Um, I do audiobooks as well. I work with a lot of independent authors and do things on Audible. Um, <laughs> probably one of the most memorable animations that I got have had the the pleasure of doing. Um, I actually was one of the first things that I was casted for when I was still trying to find my way in the voiceover realm and figuring out where to source jobs. Um, I ended up, uh, there's the, um, the artist, her YouTube and all of her social media is El Moon Art. And she has this character called Numara, who is a zombie. Um, and, uh, I have been the voice of Numara since 2020. And so she created, she does 2D animation and she created this character and this character is sort of her passion project. There's not any like huge studio budget or anything like that, but I really love it because I work directly with this artist and, and um, I'm able to bring her vision for this character that she just loves and has been, you know, creating this world for her for for some years so on on youtube there's a there's a, the story of numara where i'm numara and um there's going to be she's done some little shorts and things like that where she's had me do just voice just some little little snippets um and turned them into little shorts and then she's working on doing sort of a prequel 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 to numara where she's a child so um when that's ready i'll be voicing that as well so um, that's been, that's been really cool. So, I mean, if you're fan, if you're, there are folks that are involved with your podcast, know El Moon Art, then, then I'm Numara, but that's probably the most visible thing that you might've seen, unless you're, you're just a, a person who listens to all kinds of audiobooks and has happened across what I've done in that world. Yeah. Well, definitely, you know, give us a link to it. We'll put it down at the bottom of the video too, um, so okay. that people can go check it out. Could you maybe give us like a little taste or like a little sample of the of Numara? Yeah. Okay, so let's see here. So Numara is so she's she's a zombie. So she's oh gosh. Let's see here. So she's really pissed off at everything because somebody killed her and she's really mad about it. Um, but she also is a little bit silly and like there's this one short that I did that she turned around and saw a booty and was like, mm, nice butt. So there was there was that too. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs>
Yeah. So yeah, that that one's a good one to do first thing in the morning when my voice isn't warmed up. Yeah. Because <laughs> if you do a, a long session in that one, it'll fry you out. For sure. <laughs> what is the best warm up tip that you could give for for people who are starting out and maybe they just got their first role and like they don't know how to warm up and and like oh. get into character like what would be your best tip <laughs> well so one thing to keep in mind that a lot of people don't is um hydration everybody knows hydration is key right but for your voice you can't go chug a bottle of water right before a session and expect that you're gonna be hydrated enough not to have this scratchiness in your throat. You actually have to hydrate a couple hours beforehand. So if you have like say an early morning session, make sure you drink some water, you know, before you go to bed and then when you first get up and that sort of thing so that you're, you're nice and hydrated. That's a big, huge tip. That was something I didn't realize, you know? I thought, oh, okay, so you hydrate right before. Mm -mm. It takes a little bit more than that. But like, um, there are all kinds of vocal warm-ups that people can go through um, and there's plenty of, of great sources for those warm-ups. A lot of times for myself, I just talk to myself, you know, because I just end up warming up my voice by, you know, if like the cat's doing something like, hey, what's up? You know, I talk to the cat or I'll talk myself through making coffee or something like that and that'll, that'll kind of warm me up. Um, if you want like a specific exercise, one of the things that's really helpful is just to kind of go through those runs. So you're like, mm -hmm, like that, because you get all of the parts of your vocals there. And then you can like change that sound to be like, and so you're, you know, hitting different muscles. So that's yeah. perfect. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Jessica, for joining us today. Thank um, you for having me. Yes. Um, I am so happy that you were able to come on. We're definitely going to jump over to your podcast at some point. So if you guys want more content from Jessica, you might see me and the Eagle Chess Knockout cast on there. Uh, we are going to be heading out, but uh, thank you, audience, for participating. We will put those video shout outs up. And as always, stay positive.